Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 This is Rob Trying with Old Guy Tech TV, and today we're interviewing Claire McNeil, running for Supervisor 2 in El Dorado County, and it's a warm 95 degrees, and Claire, thank you very much for coming in. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. And uh, we had a little glitch. We're not going to tell you guys watching this recorded. If you got to watch us live, you got some fun. <laughs> So, uh, Claire, again, I, I, as I start out, usually one of the things that I always do is I, I compliment anybody who runs for office. Good, bad, or indifference, because it's the most thankless job there is. Uh, but it's the one that we need the most. So, once again, thank you very much for running. Really, really appreciate you doing that. And win, lose, or dry, no matter what, congratulations to you, because you did great. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. So, let's get into a little bit about Claire. Might you go ahead and start again about uh, what it is that, that makes you want to run for office, or made you want to run for office, and tell us a little bit about yourself, and how long you've been here, and your family, and, and let's just get to know Claire a little bit. Well... Bob and I moved here about 18 years ago. We retired from uh, Silicon Valley where we started a business and it actually is 36 years old and we're still, we're light manufacturing. And so I got my taste for politics in Santa Clara County. Mm -hmm. And over the years I have in, been involved in trying to correct some legislation that were kind of bad for businesses like workers comp. Sure. Some kinds of taxes and some tax reforms. But when we moved to Santa Clara County, or excuse me, to El Dorado County, there was really more of a, um, a serious issue to me, and it was private property rights. Mm -hmm. I could see okay. that our private property rights were being infringed upon by some of the, the uh, legislation that the feds were coming down or putting down on us uh, as far as, well, wildlands projects, things like that. Sure. And so I started to scope. Mm -hmm. which is you read the Federal Register, you right. see what's coming down, you start to write comments, and pretty soon that led to doing some very informal congressional testimony on private property rights and Good. why these kinds of things would infringe on them. Mm -hmm. And it just developed into kinds of relationships with people in the county, as of which will happen, and then you start to understand more of where there are needs. And for me, I think that it seems like people need a voice. There's a lot of organized people out there and they're talking loud and yeah. they're talking over everybody right and the people that aren't really um i don't know i don't know if i want to say confident or not but they're not they're not comfortable speaking out they have an opinion but they're not comfortable and people come to me and they talk to me and my phone rings good and they want to know and they ask me questions at least they're doing that and they they want to know where they can go yeah you know who should i call how, what should I do? Should I write a letter? Should I do this? And so that just has developed over time when, well, you know, I think I should run. I mm -hmm. think I should run for an office. Okay. And so with this vacancy, it seemed like an a crazy time. thing to do. Yeah, it de definitely a crazy thing <laughs> to do. In a short but. window like this? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. Uh, for those who, out there who don't know about it, we have a special election in El Dorado County taking place because of a supervisor that was dethroned. I don't think that's the word the court used, but was removed from office as a supervisor. And so the, the Board of Supervisors decided to have a special election. And uh, so in this case, you have it coming up in September. September 9th. Right. And it's the uh, day so that everybody it's, votes. It's very short considering we're what? July twenty fourth? It's September eleventh. Coming really soon. Yes. So it's important. And it's hard to get the message out to everybody, and that's the other issue. And the 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 third big issue for me is how do you explain District Two? Huh. Well the redistricting and you look at the census, the way that District Two is drawn out is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's extremely diverse. It's an interesting mix. <laughs> I like that word, diverse. It's very diverse. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it is. You go where I live in South County, mm -hmm. where if somebody moves in within 20 acres of me, I'm feeling pressure. Okay. So this real lifestyle, I you know, I yeah. know what they're talking about. I purposely right. moved where I moved. So right. there, and I understand that. But then as you go, and I'm horrible with directions, but down 50, uh -huh. you see it becomes more urbanized, uh -huh. and actually sure. the politics change considerably then True. too. True. They, where you get a lot more conservativeness in some parts of the district. And that's what's interesting to me mm -hmm. about it, too, is that it's diverse in terms of beliefs as well. Yeah. It's, it, it's an interesting challenge to reach out to everybody. 
Have you have you stood in front of the stores and talked to people? No. Out of curiosity, just as a challenge, one of the things that I that I notice in, in politics a lot is the difference between a property owner and a renter. The renter tends to be liberal minded and, and, and likes uh, rent control, shall we say, and the property owner is just the opposite. It's a very interesting dichotomy when you get out there and you actually talk to the people. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, yeah, someday, you know, take your little sign, set up in front of a store, talk to the people, and you'll be amazed. I have done that. Yeah, yeah I, it's amazing. It, it is amazing. Many people. And then there's parts of people, particularly as you get fur further west, there's parts of people in this county that don't even know they live in Colorado County. Right. And that's the other issue that you're facing. Oh, okay, there's election, but it doesn't affect me. Yeah, it does affect you. Mm -hmm. No, I'm in I'm in Folsom. I, I, n n no, you're not. I mean, <laughs> when you go knocking on doors in certain places and you're handing out paperwork and the, and the lady behind the door literally says, well, I don't live in El Dorado County. And I said, you looked at your property tax bills lately? Well, I got them here. Let me show you. And if, sure enough, and she said, oh, I did. Yes. And it's, you know, yeah. And and so it's a neat exercise. Like, tell everybody who runs for public office, go do it because it's fun. And, and get your name out there as well. Yes. So, something to do. So, um, so we took. planned. It's on the calendar. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. Okay, so so we got a little bit about you. And um, you have a family. You raise yes. kids and children. We have two and grown and children mm -hmm. and four grandchildren. Good our for you. Two children, I am proud to say, are taking over our business and mm -hmm. doing really well. We had another profitable year, so I'm really Good proud of that and yeah. happy for it and like i said we've been in business a long time and that's what i think i bring to the table mm -hmm. is that business person's mindset i see this job as the county is being a company it's a mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. it is it's in the business of serving people and each of the departments have a job and they all need to work together and there needs to be processes and procedures to allow them to work together to work for the public right the board right. of supervisors each of the supervisors are the ceos and they should be seeing that those things are running smoothly mm -hmm. and if they're not then they need to find out why and do something about it so in other words hold department heads accountable for their actions yes imagine that well. <laughs> <laughs> good for you glad to hear you say that because uh, that, that that's a good thing let me, let me ask you another thing that that sometimes is a good and a bad situation have you sat on any public committees um let me think about that no okay let me tell you a little something that happens and, and no matter what happens in this election and hopefully you'll win but if if you don't and you're still interested in politics try to get on a community board and the reason i say that is i've been on the uh grand jury I've been on the Transportation Commission, all the way to the Chairman, Transit Authority, all the way to the Chairman, Fish and Game Commission, all the way to the Chairman, and it's you why... You should I, run. You know what? You won't know how many times people want me to run, but I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. It's, it's enough running the groups I run now as it is, but what it gives you, it gives you an insight on how... Uh, Public entity, entities really work. What the Brown Act's all about, uh, you know, why, you know, what your agenda's like, what's open and closed. There's all kinds of things. So, it's something to think about down the road. Doesn't mean that you won't do a great job, but I do like to see people with a little bit of experience. And you've got it in business, so I think that takes it with a spade. Because if you can run a business and be profitable all those years, you got it as far as I'm concerned. So let's take a look at District 2. What do you think are the major needs of District 2? Well, affordable housing. Okay. I think we need some corrections and some help with our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think that we could really use some more businesses in there. We need jobs. We need jobs pretty badly. And we need a diverse groups of jobs at different income levels. I think that District 2 could use some light manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I think that we could use probably, I don't know, I haven't looked at all of the demographics in terms of how many of service-related businesses there are, how many uh, food-related businesses there are, mm -hmm. but I, so I'd have to look at that. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know either, right? Yeah. But I think jobs, bringing jobs in business, I also would like to see, I'd like to reach out to UC Davis or somebody like that and get some campuses in here. Well, you know, you said... UC Davis uh, is looking to expand. I don't know if you know that right yes, now. Yes, I do. Okay, so 
Uh, from what I hear, we've already been thrown out of the mix, which is too bad. But mm, uh, that's too bad. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. You, you never know what's going to well, happen. You, know, you in can the always end. open the door again. Well, here's the problem. This is the way I look at it because I go so far back as before Intel was built. That's how long I've been here. Intel looked at where they're at now, and they looked at uh, the business park in El Dorado Hills. We had we had a chance of getting that, and it all came down to infrastructure. So, for, uh, so Intel said, okay, El Dorado County, what will you do for us around infrastructure? Will you put in roads? Will you put in water? How about the utilities? What will you do to help us? <laughs> the supervisors back then went, you guys are already in mind. We're not going to give you anything. As a matter of fact, we're going to tax you. Yeah. Guess what Fulsom That's did? Right. What do you want? How many roads? Uh, you know, what else can we do for you? Uh, I mean, so our problem is the culture of the county and where the mindset's been. We've, we've got to understand that if we're going to attract these jobs that you're talking about, my opinion, we've got to attract them some way. How do you get here? Let's, right. let's do something to attract it. May it be a tax break? May it be a break on their uh, TIM fees? May it be, you know... That's one for sure, yes. Okay, right? You know it, <laughs> yeah. you know it as well as I do. And if you yes. don't know it out there, we'll explain it later if we have to. But but we have all kinds of... we got the fire tax. It's not it's not a fire Are you speaking bill. of the, the Cal Fire one? Cal Fire Niagara. tax. In what part of my district? We have yeah. two. Yeah, I yeah. understand you do. Yes. And, it, and it's ridiculous. But that, we won't get into that one because... That's a whole show. That's a whole show. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'd like to get some fire guys in here to explain exactly why you're for it. Like Brian Verkamp, I'd like you back in here to talk to me why you're for it. <laughs> Threw down the gauntlet, didn't I? <laughs> but um, so well, uh, jobs and, and attracting businesses. And, and we're talking about uh, businesses all the way from careers to beginning flipping burger right. type businesses. You, you, ha you have to create a situation, an atmosphere where <laughs> people can work their way up, if mm -hmm. you will. There mm -hmm. needs to be jobs for teenagers. The yeah. kids need a job. Part of, you know, maybe we could help with maybe a little bit of the crime mm -hmm. if the kids can That's earn something money. To do? Yes. There's a culture in, uh, in hiring people now that it's not done face to face at all. Uh, go to a major store. Let's say our Home Depot right here. You know how people get hired in Home Depot? They have to either use the computer in the store, a computer at home, and they apply online. And they apply to an al algorithm that, depending on how you answer those questions, you're either put in the pile, possible, no, well, hire. And then they hire on an every quarter basis. Mm -hmm. They never see the person. They never talk to the person. It's all done by email. And you'll either get a rejection letter or nothing or welcome aboard. Mm -hmm. And that's how they choose employees nowadays. How does somebody go in and say, hey, I'm Rob Charney. I know I can do this job for you. Uh, you know, I can sell anybody anything. Uh, sand to Arabs, water to Eskimos. I'll be there for you. I'll work out. You can't do that. The computer has no way of doing that anymore. Right. So we've got to figure out a way, not only to get these jobs in here, but a way for our people in this area to, to be qualified. Because if you talk to all the, I, I go to Home Depot, by the way, where do you live? Oh, Sacramento. Where do you live? Citrus Heights. Where do you live? Orange Valley. We're, we're hiring all kinds of people, but not in El Dorado County. Right. Right, right, right. Because the computers don't know that much about you. It's not personal. They don't care. And, I mean, we still hire the old-fashioned way. Sure. You come in, you go to a series of interviews. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's important because you get to know the person. You get to you get to hear the inf their voice inflections. Exactly. You get to see if they look at you or look away from you. Mm -hmm. You get to see how it's committed they are. Body language things. It's the whole thing that we grew up with, you know, where you always went into the business and you met the owner or the manager right. or whatever, and, and that was your first step. And we've gotten so far away from that, I think we need to come back. And I, I, I talked to people, um, even at Walmart, I talked to people and they said, you won't believe the lops they hire here. And I go, well, what, what, what's the, what's the, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know <laughs> what, what that means. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into that. Okay. But basically, it's, it's, it's. Not necessarily, not necessarily the brightest bulb in the pack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and so it's it's always like, how do you choose these people? And they go, we have no idea. We get some of the dumbest people you've ever seen. And yet, I know of very bright people that would be excellent in many departments, and they can't get anywhere. Well, based on what you said, it's because the computer hired them, not a human being. I don't know. 
Yes. I don't know. It's crazy. So let's let's try to get some jobs in here. Right. Let's try to get some jobs that we can get. Not, not we'll only that, but attractive place for where people want to come and create a business. When Bob and I created our business, we wanted to see that that community supported us. It's not a a unilateral action. It's a bilateral action. It's a it's a it's a commitment between your government and your city and your people and the business. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a big bunch of things at once. It's just not one. I mean, yes, you go in there and you say you're going to do it. Right. But you need to be, have a support system. So, I understand the county just hired a community development uh, individual. Yes. That community development in individual needs some guidance, from what I hear. And let me make an example of this. Um, the whole idea behind that, pardon me, is to try to get this person to attract business up in El Dorado County, right? Yes. I love Fords. I'm a Ford man. I'm a okay? Chevy girl. All right, good for you. <laughs> and you're lucky because you have a dealer here in El Dorado yes. County. Me? Uh -uh. The Ford dealer went out five years ago, didn't know what he was doing. It was a shame the Harold family ever sold to this person, but yeah, he ran I it into the ground. That. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we have no Ford. Because we bought two Fords from him. We have no Ford store in El Dorado County anymore. If you want your Ford worked on by a dealer, you have to go down to Folsom is the closest place. And I think that's an absolute travesty because we're missing so much. Because you know how much it, you get a store. What do you get with it? You get salesmen, you get clerks, you get auto mechanics, you get it, 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 the food store gets stuff. Every, it creates a huge amount of jobs. You get a secure tax base too, because you're generating more sales now tax. than before. But yes. you're right. Yeah, absolutely. And um, but you know they're going ah eh, you know down in Froseville or down in Folsom they already have their auto malls. And I said I tell you what you don't know El Dorado County. I live in this county. I don't want to have to go down there right. and buy that stuff. I want to stick here. This is where I want to stay. And I would assume you feel the same way. Absolutely. And so I would think you guys out there would feel the same way too. So let's try to help this person. If you have a contact or a way of doing it, let's help them. Clara, I'm yeah. going to tell you that when you get in office and you sit there, you're going to call up Rob. Hey, you know what? We talked a little bit about maybe what we can do. How Let's talk about it again, what we can do. I'm going to be here for you. Great, thanks. Okay, I'm going to help because there's a lot of things that we can do and we can help this person to get some of these jobs back in this county. And they're, they're not really big rocket science solutions. Don't have to be. No, nope, they're nope. not. They're, they're pretty simple, basic concepts that can well, be you, employed. you got to get some people with money that have the same vision you have and are willing to put their money where their mouth is. Right? Yes. That's where it takes. And um, we've kind of told these people with money who want to create jobs, go away, we don't need you. It, it's been a very unfriendly county for many years as far as business goes. I'm surprised anybody's here, to be honest with you. Uh, and um, I, I'd, I'd like to see, as one of your very first things as you sit in office, is that you work on that, that you become uh, uh, the champion of trying to get jobs and trying to get the right people in here because we need it desperately. The millennials have no place to work in Colorado. No, County. they don't. And I mean, that's what I'm running on. That's basically my platform. Yeah. If we're going to have a viable county and a viable e economy in 25 years, I'll probably yeah. be dead by oh, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have to do something now to shore up the tax base. That you cannot live. I mean, I'm not saying tourist money isn't good. Well, we like tourist money, yes. but that's not the point. No. <laughs> we can't live on it. That's right. Go downtown Placerville and look at it. How are we going to live on that? You cannot create a solid budget <laughs> yeah. on that. No. You can only project it. And that's On difficult. that dollar. You can yeah, only project yeah. the, the budget on that dollar. If this, all things are equal and the five years have been what they've been, we can expect X amount of dollars mm -hmm. from the tourism dollar. Mm -hmm. But when your budget gets so s heavy in one direction, it gets dangerous. Mm. And that's what I'm seeing happening is, is we, we don't have, so, we need more property taxes. I know people don't like that. I don't like that, but th it pays for things. How do you get property taxes? You develop affordable housing. You don't cover the county with houses. You can't do it. You can look at the geographics and the topography and see we don't really need to worry about that. But we do need to worry about getting some affordable housing in. When you say affordable housing, help me here so that I understand what what is it that you actually mean? Are you talking about apartments? No. Condos? 
Houses under a certain rate of money. What are we talking about? Right, what, are we, what are we talking about? Are we talking about what the state wants us to do? Are we no, talking about I'm, what I think is I, right? I, I want to know what Claire thinks is right. I think we need a mix. Okay. I think that most people are better off and are more engaged in the community when they're not stacked one on top of each other. Right. I think that you need some room around you. I think I think single family dwellings. Okay. Are are good for the culture and good for the economy. So how is a, a single family home, just help me here, how is that in the long run good for the county? Because you have perpetual taxes being generated from it. But it's a declining scale. Okay, I won't argue with you then. <laughs> And, and it, that's just this my experience. Yeah. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm I'm trying to have you educate, educate me. Tell me how it works because I've I'm not I've, an expert at it. Yeah, you know. I, and I've never seen single uh, family dwellings actually pay. Now, I you know they don't pay, and you can't expect it to be 100 percent. Well, the ten, the ten fees were charging, and they might as well be paying. I mean, that's Those are your two problem. Different things. Mm, no, the it's not. The fees are different than property taxes. I understand, but that's still, when you build that house, you stick that shovel in there, right? And the house is built, now oh, you go to buy now it. Now I understand, yeah. You got two fees, you got hook of fees, you got. Okay, yes. So it's a problem. You're right. When you're trying to say, I, I want to bring. I wasn't seeing it that way. Yeah, I right. was setting the Tim fee aside in my mind. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you're right. And I would work to either get that sunsetted. Or to get it reduced because yeah. well, they can and, charge what they want apparently. And that's why our time fees are so high is because of Prop 13. And and uh, and when you start saying that you want to raise property taxes, of course. No, I didn't say that. But I'm not saying you. Oh. But if someone says, okay, I want Claire says no property yeah. taxes. <laughs> When uh, when somebody says you know we need to change Prop 13 and you hear it all the time yes. going on now right there's a big you know Howard Jarvis group is fighting like crazy to keep Prop 13 yes let's keep Prop 13 yes uh, but but then you end up adding fees okay I yes. like these fees these Tim fees these hookup fees EID fees Real power fees. fees Gabriel Soil fees what, what, what did is, you see the list ha, has anybody looked at what a fee is a fee is just a tax yes all right so don't be lulled into the fact well I'm just paying a fee no 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 you're paying, paying a, a tax, tax and it's right? unmandated yeah, it's unmandated that's absolutely right and, the, and so there's the issue with it so when you get to wanting to do affordable housing this is the problem we have in El Dorado County it's so expensive that when you do the study and the return on invest, investment I just was not thinking that yeah, way. Yeah. No, it's just something I wanted to think about. Now, I think we could stand to build some higher level apartments uh, because then the guys that are making the 10 to $15 an hour. Uh, what do you mean higher level? Well, there's, sec there's uh, Section 8 housing. Okay, okay. I mean, okay, really okay, low, yeah. you know, yeah. bottom of the barrel type of thing. At least it's a roof over your head type yes. of thing. Then there's the scale up from that. It's a little better, a little better carpet. Like where you little and I rented when we were first married. You got it. Okay. And uh, we didn't get married, no. but we understand what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I'm married to Bob. <laughs> um, so um, what I think is that uh, uh, some of the apartment buildings we have around El Dorado County are nice. Some, some are not so nice. Right. Some are in crime higher crime areas but I think we need something for those people that make 10 to 15 maybe 10 to 18 dollars an hour where they can move into and live halfway comfortably not great but still they can get by and 10 then to 15 dollars <coughs> an hour net is about eight or nine so yeah it's it's poor yes but if you can get that rent under a thousand dollars a month the, a family can usually do it well, then you, <coughs> you make Excuse an me. excellent point about the Tim fees. It's impossible. It's not going to ever happen. Yeah, it's really, really difficult. Yeah. And I've studied that a, a, a lot, and that's why I've never been able to get this affordable housing thing to actually pencil perfectly yet. And then, you know, and so we get the opposite. We get the Serranos with the million-dollar homes, and, and those all those people that can, you know, anywhere from a half a million on up can afford those homes right. without any problem. Well, that's a different entity all, all onto itself. And then half of those people brought their Prop 13 taxes up with them and hasn't helped the county any. No. Housing is one of those issues when you start looking at housing to help support uh, a county and bring in more coffers, it's very difficult uh, to really make it work. It really well, of is. Of course. Yeah. 
But it, you need it as an anchor, at least, to bring in business. People that want businesses want to know that their employees have a place that they can live so they don't have to make their wage so high. It's a chicken and an egg type it of is, thing, truly. right? Yeah. So you want the employees, but you want the employees to live here. But if the employees are going to live here, you've got to have the housing. Right, exactly. So it, it's, it's a tough situation, and, and uh, I don't have the answer. Maybe you will. And I think um, working together, we'll find one. I hope so. With somebody that finally says, okay, let's do this. Well, it would be nice to do that. It would be nice to try to figure out and really study all these fees that everybody gets added on to. It's just like business, like your business, my business, Jonathan's business and all that. Uh, I was talking earlier about the unsecured property tax bill. I am just so, it just drives me to the core that California has this unsecured property tax uh, that we have to pay. Right. Mm -hmm. I paid taxes on this equipment already. But every year, I have to keep paying taxes. Yeah, I can write it down a little bit every year. But still, how does that? I mean, California, my good friend Ted Nugent has it right. We are the planet of the apes here yeah. in California. <laughs> and if you haven't seen my interview with Ted, go to my website. You'll see it. He's right. We're crazy here. We are absolutely stone crazy in California. We have no way of attracting business. We have no way of getting affordable housing. We have Now, how do you like the governor's bullet train? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. That answered that. We'll move along. That's Absolutely. not a county That's issue. It, isn't it? It, it's just like what? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm how just crazy. How do you understand that? It, it hurts. It, how do you know? I, yeah. Exactly. It just doesn't make make any sense there. How um? How, let's talk facilities and roads because those are the other two issues that are big on on my list. Yes. Let's talk facilities. As you are probably aware of, we have a number of buildings in El Dorado County that are, uh, like if we were to put a road level, would be building level F. Um, because they, there has been no uh, maintenance done on many of these buildings for a long time. They did deferred maintenance because our budget was so tight and they said if we can put it off, we're going to put it off. And now we have buildings that are so bad that you, you can't do anything to them because it would cost more to try to fix them than to tear them down and start. Yes, it would, unless you kept up one wall so that you didn't have to pay the TIM fees. Well, but this is the county, so yeah, the county is excluded from that. That's so true. let's talk county here. Um, we need, if, as you go around the county, look at some of these county buildings and look at the, the atmosphere that we're putting some of our workers into. Uh, perfect example, my good friend, Sheriff John D'Agostini. Yeah, I was just going to say okay. that, yeah. Uh, bless his heart, he says he bites his tongue and he, and, and, and he tries to be real chipper, but nobody needs a new building more than the That's Sheriff's right. Department. Okay, uh, They have guys actually working in areas that you can't house a prisoner. It's so bad in yes, there. Okay? So we, we really need to get, and I, there's a couple of you that have written letters to the editor complaining about my pushing and the sheriff's pushing for a new building, but folks, trust me, if you want to see how bad it is, Go down call there. them, say, I'd like, it, I'd like the tour, and they'll come out it's and show you. It's true story. It's true. Go see it. It's needed so badly. Do you see, I mean, obviously you see that need? Well, yes, but, well, I was going to say, but it's because the sheriff has talked to us about it. Okay, so, so, you know, I mean, he's been open if he because hadn't this show said probably, anything, yeah, you wouldn't know. Yeah, in, yes. in this show has probably done more than any other show yes. in El Dorado County to, to bring this to the forefront. We have a situation with um, animal control, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now, I understand that we're in the process or might be in the process or could be in the process of buying land and building a new building. Oh, yes. Know anything about that at all? No, no, I was really, hoping no, you could help me with no, that. I haven't. I, you can never get a complete answer. Mm. There's not ever anybody that can really tell you exactly what the game plan yeah, is. Yeah, and who would you call? That's the point. You, you don't Your supervisor, really, probably. Yes. Okay. That's what I would think. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to try that tomorrow. I'm going to call my supervisor, and I'm going to find out what Who's they're your doing. Who's yeah. uh, uh, Brian Verkamp. Okay. Yeah, I'm in you, District 3. <laughs> you didn't get me. You tried, I know. <laughs> I've been through a lot of them. I've been here a yeah. long time. Um, so we, we we recognize the need for uh, for facilities and, and we need yes. yeah I know folks you don't want to spend money and I, and there was a letter letter to the editor talking about the sheriff building his own Pentagon and if I had oh, anything to do boy. with it yeah I'd build a Pentagon it's I worked there it's a pretty cool building <laughs> I can tell you firsthand but uh, yeah people are just whew, they don't get it um, 
Uh, and then there's some other things. I mean, like the senior center building, uh, where they do the senior nutritional centers. That, that's the old hospital. Yes. It's so old. It needs help. I mean, there's a, all over the county we need help. So we need some help on facilities. How do you feel about roads? I think they're miserable. Okay. I think we need more roads. Have you driven to South County or Cle mm. did the roads repaired? We drive a motorcycle all the time. I'm on this county uh, almost every week and driving around looking at things. Well, I don't know if you've come up and down my road, Happy Valley Road. It's oh, miserable. Oh, yes. We were just not too long ago, Jonathan yeah. and I took a bicycle, did you, I mean, a motorcycle it's ride. It's, it's bad. really bad. It's bad. And now I won't ride down with Bob anymore. Mm. I, ha I make him trailer the bike. Mm -hmm. I'm too freaked out. Mm -hmm. to, to, years, it's too, too bad. And the that's, I think if anything that shows the sign of the decay of our infrastructure, it is our roads. Mm -hmm. But trying to get people to understand that they need to spend money on it, it's going to hurt a little because we've let it go so long. Okay, is that what it is? We uh, just haven't spent the money? I think so. Or is it planning? Probably a combination of both. I'm but still trying to figure it out. are greedy. They don't want to spend the money. They're, they think anytime you talk about the, oh, they're going to raise our taxes, oh, and they don't see the benefit they're getting from the good roads or mm -hmm. the good sound buildings. How can the sheriff work yeah. in a place where he's constantly having to do maintenance? Not he, the sheriff himself, no, 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 but right. the people there. The department there, no. They're distracted. And they don't, how would you like to go to work every day down into a, what was a prisoner cell to work and do your job down there when you know they couldn't house a prisoner, yet you get to work oh, in and there. that's a don't even get me going on that one it's not good enough for a prisoner not good enough for a prisoner but it's good enough for one of our for public safety officers yeah that's right. mm, no it doesn't yeah. work for me pretty strange huh yes the and logic then, is something and we get these people to say no the sheriff's just wasting money he wants to build himself a pentagon oh god did that drive me crazy <laughs> <laughs> can you tell can you tell rob's almost on a rod's ramp watch out for rob's rants uh so roads i now Roads are an interesting entity because there are state mandated, federal mandated and funded monies that go into a certain, certain amount of roads. And so when I mentioned planning, and one of the things that, uh, that, that I think is important is identifying those roads that are in the worst shape, level F or worse. And, and, and when I use level F, that's usually used in traffic, sitting on the, uh, tra uh, uh, sitting on the commission for uh, traffic and roads in El Dorado County, you know, a lot of people get levels mixed up with other levels. L uh, level F in traffic means it's back, the, the road cannot handle the amount of traffic, of traffic that it's built for right now. So that's level F on traffic. And that's about 50% of our roads, isn't it? Um, in certain areas, it's yeah. higher than that. Uh, I think South yeah, County uh, for sure. Some of it's 100% uh, plus. But um, and especially you get a school bus and you get yeah. other things that block it up and, and it just goes to hell. Um, but so we do need to study roads. And I don't really know. I'm not a planner. I'm not a road planner. I'm not an engineer. So my question, again, if I was sitting there a supervisor, I would certainly want the uh, director of Department of Transportation to come to me and say, Mr. Supervisor or Miss Supervisor, this is how we select what roads to fix when. So I want to understand that process. And, you know, I want to know, how does that get done? How does that get, I mean, you were talking about Happy Valley. You ride that road and you wonder, nobody's touched it in years. It's an obvious sign. W why not? Is it level of traffic again? I think it's because there's also a disconnect between all the different departments in the county and the supervisors. But I don't know exactly why there's that disconnect. It doesn't seem that the departments work well together or trade information or share information and it also doesn't seem to me as though they give information to the supervisors in a timely manner it's always everybody's behind i mm -hmm. don't know what the answer is to that mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's just what i see outside looking in well i think my opinion if i was in there i would make the department heads accountable for re making those reports and doing yes, it on a, on a, a timely, timely manner basis. so i would give direction to the cao and i'd say I expect your department heads to report in a timely manner on this issue. That's your job. And you, if you can't do it, you come in front of me and tell me why you can't. So you have to start you know, making people accountable for their jobs right. and why they're there. Right? So well, that I, is the job of the CAO. That's the job of the CAO. Yes, it is. And then your job as supervisor is to take that information <laughs> right. and tell that CEO yeah, yeah. I expect it at a yes. certain time you know and I don't quite understand government's a really funny entity 
government's the only entity that I know of that can can build something, go over budget, <laughs> and not have it work, and it's still okay. Yeah. I couldn't do that How in my do company. We, I mean, it, it's like, I, I won't even get into the Bay Bridge situation, but you look at some of these things, and, and that's the way it is. It's it's You sign a contract with the company XYZ, oh, they're going to produce this computer program for you that'll do everything. They spend three years trying to put it together. It never works, and they throw it out. And start new. And, and that company is, grant, is not and responsible for it. Yeah. I don't understand that. And, and, and that's the kind of thing that I think we need tightening up. So you're talking about accountability. Absolutely. Yes. And Imagine it's that. very lacking, yes. Just like you're a business person. You would expect your employee to be accountable for their job and not. They better have a damn good excuse right. why it wasn't done. Yes. It's got to it's got to be the same way in government. And I know there's going to be people out there just screaming at me. Oh, you can't have government run this. Yes, you can have government run like a business, and we damn well better. And Claire's going to make sure that it's run like a business. Well, I'm going to give it a good shot. I'll yeah, you that. better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, those are the things that we you know we kind of have to look at. And uh, and we we talked about. Is there another hot button issue for you? Well. I think fire safety. Yeah, too. fire is a big one. Yeah, and you know it's it's even more on your mind when we're in this kind of situation in the weather. We've got a shortage of water, mm. and we're sitting on I mean how many thousands of acres of federal land that's nothing's being done on it. Mm -hmm. They're just trees fall down. I mean they don't do anything. To, right. To, they don't manage the forest at, at all. all. Right. Not at all. Not at all. And that's. A scary thing to think about because I've seen the films about mm -hmm. what would happen, mm -hmm. especially in South County, mm -hmm. if there was a major fire and that place would go up in, I don't know, a couple, two, three hours. Yeah. And I'm a really concerned You're about, about that. Very much. Yeah. Of course, a lot of that's you know, federal. I do understand that. Yeah. And I understand Cal Fire's role, yeah. but there's not enough personnel to take care of the problem if we can't get the feds to take care of at least taking care of the forest a little bit better. So let, let me step back and, and, and draw a picture for you here. So I graduate high school and I really love plants and trees and I, and I think, gosh, I would really like to make a forestry my career. So I go to UC Santa Barbara, UC Chico, you see wherever, <laughs> and I go and I get my degree in forestry, and I say, okay, well, now I need a job. Well, most of the jobs in forestry, of course, are federal yes. or state jobs, right? So now you, you go ahead and, okay, well, I'm gonna get a federal job. So what did they teach me in school? Human footprint bad. Yes. No use good, good. right? That's what they teach them. Yes. And that's what they believe. And, and I, I've never understood the difference. Why well, these people don't understand the difference be between conservation and preservation? Okay, there's a big difference a between it, difference. right? You want you want the wise use of our resources, but you don't want it that the resources aren't used at all. And right now, our federal government, in many ways, is taking broad strokes of land and saying, you know what? No humans. You cannot step into these areas. Right. So our our back to our picture of our student who's gone to school and had this had this taught to them they don't know any different they don't know because they were taught one way in school and it takes people like supervisors and people like uh, council people and people like uh, assembly people and people like state people to try to help educate these these forest rangers and forest supervisors and all these people to do this stuff what it's all about because they don't get it right I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for this, guys, but hey, <laughs> the truth is the truth. You know, you, you, you get a certain amount. And so you as supervisor, you, you get, you're going to get a lot of that as well. Yes. You're going to want, you know, you're going to want to watch what's going on in that forest and make sure that it, it's doing its job for Colorado County. Uh, yes. And well, and then that goes into, you know, not being able to log anymore, you know, so. That was a you know when they when they business. when they finally shut down Michigan Cal or um, SPC I guess it is yeah now. and they SBI. finally SBI when they took the equipment out that was the the nail in the coffin and, and and now the building actually fell down yes yeah and it's a shame because they're still logging those those logs are going down our highway system all the way to their mill further up California somewhere I can't remember where it's at and it just kills you because all those jobs went away and, and those are jobs the money we needed that it generated for the county. 
All of it. Because of what you said earlier. Yeah. No human footprint. No, no human footprint. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And now we got, we've got so many things going on in the state, and it's not really a supervisor to look at that, but on the state levels, you, you know, we've got this no lead ban that's coming up, <laughs> and, and all kinds of just stupid... Are you talking about bullets? I'm talking about bullets. Okay. <laughs> and we're, we've got all this junk science, and it's literally junk. Junk science coming about, and there's nobody there to challenge it. Uh, many of the guys that are qualified to challenge it are retired out, and they want, I fought the fought for 30 years, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. And that's the problem. We don't have enough of the guys that really know what's going on. And uh, we need them. We need that institutional knowledge, and we don't get it. Um, so the roads, you know, we, need, we, we, we know we, we need to fix roads and keep things going. We've seen some work going on in El Dorado County now, so that's some hope. It's huh? hope, yes. Yeah. It's hope. But it, it's, it seems to me that the biggest obstacle to a lot of the solutions that should be easy is changing the mindset of people. Mm -hmm. They've been, or I don't know, either just, I, it's hard for me. It's okay, no problem. <laughs> it's just that. I don't bite. I know that. It's, I'm trying actually to be careful about how I say that. <laughs> <laughs> I just say anything. Go ahead. They don't. Is that they've. The, the other generation, the generation younger than us, mm -hmm. they've been kind of brainwashed, I mm -hmm. want to say. I, mm -hmm. the, I mean, that's well, what yeah. I'm going to say. They've been brainwashed. Uh, our generation systems, didn't do a favor to the younger generation, to be honest with you. Uh, there's some I didn't vote went, for this. Well, I fought it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, I, I didn't really want to go to Vietnam either. Right. So <laughs> I, I fought against that, too. But in some respects, it's we took our... It's just special interest. There's so much yeah. special interest. Oh, well, I'm sorry is. to interrupt No, you. no, no, no. This is your show. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it is all special interest. And yeah. they, they, they yell over everybody. They yell over the common person's voice. And I don't mean common in a diminishing way. No. It's just the regular people yeah. like you regular and I. Joe. Mo some Joe the people plumber. aren't like me that just are like, yep, I'm going to run for supervisor. They want to have their job, they want to be left at home, but That's they right. need a voice. Yeah. But they're being shouted over. Right. And right. so the, the little bits of pieces they pick up are feel-good pieces of information. Oh, that sounds right. Yes, I, I, I don't want my rivers to be polluted. Well, I don't either. But it's not exactly how this is being projected, and it's right. killing us now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is, and it, it's back to the... But how stupid is no lead in bullets? <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I tell you, um, Governor Brown is this close to signing it. Uh, they're fighting that right now. What's your belief in the Second Amendment? Individuals' rights to own firearms. I have a CCW. Okay, so you're pro-firearm. That's Yes, sir. Good for you. Uh, and, and, and you're brave to say it, and, and, and you're proud to say it, too. Yes. Right? Yeah, thank you. Well, did you know, starting in May 2014 and by January 1, 20, uh, 2015, there will be no handguns for sale in the state of California. Yes, I do know that. Did you know that? Yes. Isn't that just special? Yes, it is. It is. California, you guys are just so special. You really uh, helped with the profitability of Smith uh, & Wesson. <laughs> you know, um, Beretta. And Beretta, yeah. Beretta just picked up and wa left the state of New York and went to Tennessee. Whole lock, stock, and barrel and, and told New York. Maryland. Or Maryland. Heck with you, Maryland. And uh, we're, we're getting out of here, you know, good for Beretta, because I thought for sure they were going to leave permanently. Uh, but uh, fortunately, there's enough other states buying stuff that they're willing to stay. Yeah. But we won't have anything. That, so that's going to solve all the crime, right? Sure it will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that, that'll solve it all. <laughs> I think you and I probably have the same belief systems about that. Uh, yeah, I don't understand it. It, it gets so crazy. And I it's believe not really in a, a well-maintained militia. Good. Good for you. Even though it's not really the job of a supervisor on that, uh, no. but, but it's good to know. Me. It's well, but it's good <laughs> to know where you yeah. stand. Um, and I personally think, you know, if we, we're going to jump a little higher into the federal level, if we look at our, our bill of rights in, in, in our uh, first through fourth, uh, most people don't even. I, I ask people what the third amendment is. And don't most ask of me them, right now. Yeah, I'm too see, to most of them do that. There's a third. No. Well, there's a fourth. There must be a third. <laughs> I'm not challenging you. Uh, I honestly couldn't. I mean, I carry a pocket constitution. Sure, I have sure. since I was 16. Right now, I'm so nervous I can barely think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing fine. You're doing fine. We're almost at the end here. We just I just got flashed the signal. Okay. So, but uh, I, it, I think it's important for those of you. And it, boy, this sounds like the Rob Show. I want to apologize. I really don't want this to be about you and not about me. But I, I want you guys out there to study the Constitution, study yes. the Bill of Rights, and understand what what these things mean. But that's for another day. 
Um, so we're going to wrap it up a little bit, and, I, and this is the part where I really want you to talk to the audience and tell the audience what it is your message is and why they should vote for you. Well, my message is is that I I grew up with the saying that you can only change things from within. You don't go out, you don't protest, you don't complain, you don't, um, well, I won't use those words on this station, but. Um, you can say anything you want <laughs> on our station. We don't bleep anything. My mother would be offended if <laughs> okay. I used that language. Anyway, <laughs> that you work within the inside to change it, and that you're calm and you're rational, and, and that you have to have the courage of your convictions. Mm -hmm. And I see a need here. I see, I'm not saying that I'll be perfect at it, but uh, there's a need. And there's a need for a voice for people. There's a need to be able to look at the situation in the, in the county government right now and, and use the procedures and the processes that are already in place. Use our general plan to help us plan. That's what it's there for. We all commented on it. Didn't you comment mm -hmm. on it? Didn't you? I did. Mm -hmm. Then it got litigated. Mm -hmm. And then it went through a bunch of stuff. But it's there for us. And we have a charter review committee yes. because of it. And I have a very dear friend on it. Good. And I'm okay. very happy. And Good. I and I would like to encourage everybody to read our charter. Know what we're about. Mm -hmm. But back to me. Well, actually, all that actually has to do with it. If we just use the documents and the procedures we have with us and create some kind of situation or environment where the departments work together again, we could be really powerful and we could be an example to the rest of the other, what, 57 counties. Mm -hmm. And we have so much to offer. We have so many resources. We have so much talent. There's just so much here to give to the rest. And that's also what I'm talking about. We can't make ourselves a little... Uh, what is that? A separated unit. We mm -hmm. have we're part of the rest of the state, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of great people who live here, and we all should work together to be able to help ourselves be successful. And that would be something that I would like to do, and it would be my goal as the supervisor. Now, I got to be honest. I'm not sure exactly everything the supervisor does, mm -hmm. but I can tell you this: I can learn it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, most of the time you learn on the job. That's right. That's school hard knocks that's, that's what you right. do you yeah. learn how to do it as you you know yeah and hopefully you've got the intelligence to use the information correctly sure you also seem like one that will be willing to work with the other supervisor and that's my goal yeah uh, because you don't we, some, we too often we get supervisors that are so against each other or don't like each other at all and nothing works and you can't do that and i hate the word compromise but sometimes you have to and, you know, maybe we can make something work. Maybe that's your goal. Your goal is to try to make that board of supervisors work and actually get things done. Well, and that's really important because I, if when elected, I represent District 2 to the other supervisors. And together, we all represent the county. Mm -hmm. And we do need to do that. And that is a goal of mine. But you just articulated it better for than I did for me. Thank you. I just do this all the time, so I never know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did a wonderful job, Claire. And, and I can't thank you enough for coming in and um, being part of our show. Uh, you know, we always extend the invitation if you'd like to come back. Great. Call us up. Okay. We'll, we'll have you back. And if there's a, a particular topic that you, you want to talk about, hey, That's I'm beautiful. game. <laughs> I'll take anybody on. You're going to give me a platform, really? I'll give you a platform. <laughs> oh, wow. I really will. And it can be seen by the world. Oh, that's great. Our little show has gone so far. I'll start. I, I got one minute to knock this in. We actually have viewers in Australia and wow. New, New Zealand. And I don't understand why you guys are watching us, but thank you very much for doing that. The the Kiwis and the Aussies seem to like our show for that's some really reason. Neat. So that's kind of neat. Guess, if, you, if, you'd, if you'd told me that when I came in here, I probably you would. That's right. You wouldn't have believed it. No. <laughs> No, but oh, I would have been too afraid. Oh, no. my gosh. Scared. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you think they can't vote for you anyway. So. It doesn't make any difference. It's just the <laughs> idea of being out there like that. <laughs> well, but isn't this a great way to bring your message out? Yes, thank I, you. I mean, this is it. People are going to be able to see this message 24 and 7. It'll be a web available for your website. By the way, you have a website? Yes. And do. it is? 
Oh, www.clairemcneil.com. Although my husband said, don't say it that way. Just say Claire McNeil. <laughs> Claire McNeil yeah. com. There you go. That'll be perfect. And I'd appreciate and, your vote. Thank you. And so on your webpage, you've got a way of getting a hold of you. Yes. And I hope a donation button. And yes. And all those good things. And I'll, I always tell everybody, don't forget to get Old Guy Tech TV a donation. And you want to see this again? Can yeah, but I have a bill that I just got for today. You got to pay. <laughs> so I need some money. <laughs> We'll add a button. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, again, thank you very much for coming. I really enjoyed this. This hour went by really fast. You're it did, great. Actually, <laughs> yeah, you're really great. I really enjoyed talking thank to you. you. I'm sorry. Sorry if I got on my high horse a little bit. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, it's your show, so it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Claire, for coming. I really appreciate you're welcome. it. My and uh, hey, this is Rob Old Guy Tech TV. Thanks for watching uh, Old Guy Tech TV interviews with Claire McNeil, and we'll see you next time.